Hey, how are ya? So today we're gonna be talking about video game birds, which I know is a very strange video topic, but it's actually pretty on course for what I've been doing for the last four years. I run a web series called Boundary Break, and in this series, I can move the camera around freely in 3D games to try to find things of interest. And one of the things that seems to pop up very frequently is video game birds. And I, you know, what makes a video game bird interesting? Well, the thing is, is that a lot of these birds that we're gonna be talking about today are very skittish and usually very far away. And you don't get to get a good look of any of the details that they seem to always have. And this ranges from as far back as the Nintendo 64 to present day. And I really wanted to take a chance and an opportunity here to just guide you through some of the highlight birds that I found over the course of four years and uh, make this just a fun, interesting video about how developers decide to model their birds. So with that said, let's get started with Mario 64, I think. Yeah, we'll do that. It's me, Mario. Yeah, even if you go as far back as Super Mario 64, you're gonna see that they did try to implement birds into this game. Now, these birds fall somewhere in the middle in terms of detail. They're fully 3D modeled, which is really nice, uh, but they don't have eyes. But they are two-toned, they have a lighter underbelly, and they are primarily blue. Now, the cool thing is that Super Mario 64 was remade on the Nintendo DS, and the birds that are in that game behave a little bit differently and look a lot differently. Both are blue, and both of them feature beaks, but this new version of the bird seems to have a separate head whereas the other one didn't really seem to have a neck of any kind, and they ditched the lighter underbelly. Instead, the tones of blue seem to get darker and darker as it dissipates further down the body and towards the wings. Anyways, let's jump forward to Mortal Kombat. This is the ninth entry in the series, so this is much further into the future where Xbox 360 and PS3 reign supreme, and the bird that's available in this game are crows. Now, while doing research for this video, I started to catch on to the fact that there are two types of birds that seem to pop up the most often. It's seagulls, and crows. And so of all the crows I could have shown you guys in this video, I decided to go with Mortal Kombat because these crows in particular seem to have a distinct red eye. And it's cool because if you put the camera right up to his face, you can pretty much see the square in which the red eye was placed on the model. Also, taking the camera inside of the crow's body shows you that it does have a full wingspan, making it possible for this bird to fly around. But since they're not flying, only a little bit of the wings are poking out. This is still to give the player a sense that they have wings, it's just that they don't want to have it fully expanded, which is a pretty cool technique. I remember seeing that in the Untitled Goose Game episode, only in that game his wingspan was completely retracted into the body. Anyways, let's go back in time to a PlayStation 1 game, Crash Bandicoot 2. Here are the birds that you can take a look at before you land on the warp area, and they are hilariously low polyed. They got these big black olive shaped eyes, as well as essentially a pyramid for a beak. The beak seems to be almost as big as the bird itself and the tail seems to have a completely different color from the main plumage being blue instead of white. Now, in the remake of Crash Bandicoot 2 on the Insane Trilogy, the bird is completely different. While it still retains its black olive-shaped eyes, it's primarily blue, it has itself a head and a neck, but almost seemingly as a nod to the original game, the tail feathers still retain a darker blue aesthetic. Also in addition to this bird is the white underbelly, very similar to the one that's in Mario 64. But now let's talk about doves, specifically the doves in Bioshock Infinite. There are two types of birds for the record. There is the hummingbird, which seems to have a fully modeled body, but then the effect of its wings seem to be pulled off with textures instead of 3D models, which is really interesting, but we're gonna take a look at the dove now, which seems to share a story of its own. If you look at it closely, you can see digital brush strokes all over the bird's wings, which doesn't really line up with the art style of Bioshock Infinite itself. While that game isn't particularly realistic looking, the art style certainly doesn't mimic comic book style art, whereas these wings sort of give off that vibe. Also on its neck seems to be green and red plumage, which is a really interesting touch that was added to the model. Also this bird seems to have red eyes with a black line cutting through the middle. Now this is one that a lot of you probably already have seen up close considering the fact that it's a collectible, but even then with the breakneck speed of Sonic in general, you may not take the time to notice these sort of things. In Sonic Adventure 2, here's a parrot up close. The head on the model seems to be separate. It has yellow plumage around the green eye. And although it's really difficult to see because of the fat belly and also the tail feathers covering it all up, this bird does in fact have talons of its own. And these talons seem to be very, very low poly, doing only so much as to represent that they are talons at all. And since we talked about one Sega game, let's talk about another. Although this game is only developed by Sega and technically owned by Nintendo. Now I've got an opportunity to show you guys one of my favorite birds I ever discovered on this show, unfortunately tied to a very unpopular episode. These are the flying creatures in F-Zero GX. Now you may argue that these are not birds, but it's hard to say really, so I'm 
gonna make the claim. Who cares? These guys are always so far off in the distance and you can never ever see the amount of detail that they seem to possess. In fact, you're looking at this game in HD right now, but even in HD, the heat waves from the desert seem to mask any detail that you could possibly grab from them. Taking the camera up close though shows you that they have fangs, talons, separately colored wings from the body itself, and two interesting antennae or feathers seemingly coming off the top of the head. Whenever I think about the best bird discoveries, it's this guy and one other one that we'll show you at the end of this episode. But I'll tell you one thing, it is a seagull, much like the last three we're gonna be looking at here. The first seagull I wanna look at is probably the most accurate looking bird that's featured in this entire video, which makes it especially true that it stands out as the most realistic looking seagull out of the three that I'm about to show you. This is the seagull from The Last of Us. Now, fans of The Last of Us tend to laugh at this bird because so much of The Last of Us in general seems to be super realistic looking. And by by comparison to the other models shared in the game, the seagull's kind of sad and low poly looking, but I think that anybody that's watching this video right now would probably agree that it's it's a really nice looking bird model, and I would throw no shade at it. However, Fallout 4 seems to do things a lot differently. This bird is canonically called the Radgull, and due to the post-apocalyptic future of Fallout 4, these seagulls are inherently mutated, and so I could certainly talk about things like its red beak and bloodshot eyes without pupils, but honestly that would just be a pretty thinly veiled attempt to just ignore all the mutations riddled throughout its body. And I will say the fact that it stays pretty on brand for Fallout makes it a very interesting looking bird, probably the most interesting looking one on this list. That is to say, if it weren't for the last bird that we're gonna be looking at today. This is the cream of the crop, folks. It's a very, very old game, and normally you would think that the older games would not have birds that are fully 3D modeled, but Mario 64 already proved that wrong, and so did Crash Bandicoot 2. Mario 64 is no exception, but <laughs> it's very strange. So if we take the camera over to the seagulls in Koopa Beach, we can see that the seagull is really strange looking. It has a very defined beak, that's very nice. Its body is insanely low poly, which is great, but the eyes, man, the eyes just kill me. Whoever designed this bird seemed to have designed some sort of anime eye or a human eye and just blew it up. It's hard to say exactly, but for some reason, the designer gave these birds big luscious black eyes with white around them. It doesn't look like anything that would be in the Mario universe. It doesn't look like anything that would be in the human universe. It's so strange and so bizarre and probably the biggest inspiration for why I need to make this list. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, um, I decided to make some new merch. Uh, for a limited time only, I'm going to be selling a Birds of Boundary Break t-shirt. So all the nine birds that you saw in this video are going to be featured on this shirt. You can see what it looks like here. I thought it would be a really fun idea to do a parody of those gift shop shirts that you see at campsites and stuff. And uh, if you're interested, there's a link in the video description as well as probably below the video description. Uh, I'll see about that. But anyways, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And uh, there will be a full Boundary Break episode coming up next. So I hope that you stay tuned for that. Take care.